It is a beautiful evening here from George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University where the men's soccer team back in action again defending their home turf following a win earlier this week. Tonight they host the Earlham Quakers visiting from Indiana. Cole McDaniel alongside me, Tommy Maroon. Tommy, good to be with you again. Great to be with you indeed, Cole. I can't wait for this game. I mean, it's hard to follow up and act like the football game earlier today I mean half my voice has gone from that and yeah but still I feel like this should be a good game nonetheless so the Yellow Jackets have had a really hot start to the non-conference season as that is quickly winding down this weekend actually going to be the end of the non-conference schedule as next Saturday begins OAC play and the Yellow Jackets come in tonight with an overall record of 7-0-1 looking to remain undefeated as for the visitors and the Quakers coming in with a record of 3-3-1 three, three and one. on a three game losing streak though the last two matches they played also against teams from Ohio Marietta who's also in the OAC, fell 3-2 to them, as well as then played against Wittenberg and fell 3-0. So Earl, I'm going to look to get things back on track. They had a pretty good start to their year, but they're on a little bit of a skid here, of course, before they start their conference schedule, get into the heart of that. They're going to look to turn things around as well. All right, it's kickoff time. Let's get this show on the road. And let's look at those lineups, shall we? And so here is the kickoff, and we'll get to the lineups here in just a moment. But the Yellow Jackets down there on the field with the brown shorts, their white jerseys with the brown stripes there on the front. They will be attacking from left to right on your screen. As for Earlham and the Quakers, they have their maroon-colored jerseys with the gold numerals going from right to left on your screen here in the first half. For the Yellow Jackets, we're going to touch on the lineup here in just a moment, and Nothing changes from earlier this week. They were clinical against Hiram, winning 7-0. Of course, the guys on the bench checking in, they made an impact as well, scored a couple goals themselves. Again, they kept a shutout. Everybody really touched that field. It felt like everybody who was available could hop in and got plenty of time here earlier this week. But like I said, the starting lineup remaining unchanged. An attack here for Kane, looking for an opportunity to get a shot off. And Earlham hoping to clear and Surowitz fighting for it. And able to get this out the other way. And we'll look at the Yellow Jackets starting lineup. In goal, number zero, Zoltan Nagy. Also on the field, number four, Trevor Ham. Number five, Brandon Garibaldi. Number seven, Owen Reyes. And that one's going to be head out for a goal kick and get back to the rest of the starting lineup. Number 11, Dylan Keeling. Number 12, Thomas Ridella. Number 18, Ethan Corsi. Number 21, Tommy Booser. Number 28, Nick Surowitz. And number 30, Nick Young, as well as number 34, Mike Kane. So Dylan Keeling, really the set piece specialist in the starting lineup. First corner for the Yellow Jackets, the end swinger from the far side, and floats this one towards the back post. Young's the initial one to get to it. Hit him in the chest there. Not much he could do on that one. An easy grab for the goalkeeper. Number 33, Tyler Smith. And we'll talk about the starting lineup for the visiting Quakers here now as well. Talked about Smith, who has the ball at the moment. Also on the field with him, number four, Edgar Hernandez. Number seven, Oren Gintner. Number eight, Antonio Paganelli. Number nine, Braden Gwynn. Number 10, Andre Morial. Number 13, Kevin Ginn. Number 14, Connor Kimball. Number 16, Caleb Wilgen. Number 18, Thato Saolo. And number 20, Quentin Berry. Young has it now from right back. Finds Keeling in the middle. Was so impressed with the way Keeling played in the last match. Really that engine in the offense. He's going to look to find his teammates and find feet. Tommy Boozer also had a really great night earlier this week. Whipping in the cross, getting forward from left back. I think he stepped out. That's what they're going to say right there. Yeah. Going to be BW ball. Yeah, last Kind of deep into their territory. Last off of Earlham. Throw for the Yellow Jackets. Here's Ham in the middle of the field. 
working his way forward. Not much pressure being applied. He's going to have time to deliver this towards the back post. It does get to Kane. Pops that one up. Corsi settles it. Here's Booser from left back on his preferred right foot into the box. It was low and initially won by Earlham. Maybe an opportunity to break and get out in transition. And Ham coming across in the senior defender. Big win of the ball there. All right, so four minutes through this first half. It's still nothing, nothing. But if you recall during the last game against Hiram, it started off nothing to nothing, of course. And that's how it was for like the first 10, 15 minutes until BW just cracked it open. Well, again, soccer is a game of patience, feeling things out, getting comfor comfortable, settling into the game. Yellow Jackets doing exactly what they want. They bossed possession last match out against Hiram. Hiram hardly had any touches on the ball. Really didn't have any opportunities in the final third. Ham playing that one long there, looking for Young. It's going to run long and out for a goal kick. And the Yellow Jackets looking to do much of the same. At this point, they've had the majority of possession through five minutes. Just working around the defense and through the midfield. Great one and two touch passing. And to those that are new to our broadcast, Coach Reed Ayers really likes his aggressive gameplay out there. Really the attack on the one side for the Yellow Jackets. And that is definitely what's been showing out here, not just tonight, but all season long. Coach Ayers, the longtime coach of this program, 21 years. He has been the head coach for the men's program. Also joining him on the sidelines is assistant coach Nick Talgen, Vince Milner, Danny Rupel, and Armand Witt, as well as student assistant coaches Jacob Taggart and Ben Wilson. This one launched high into the air and settled by Surowitz. He tried to find Kane through. That one bounced up, but he got the header, and here's Reyes. A lot of jerseys that were, of course, not his teammates around him and taken away from him. I was talking with Owen Reyes earlier today. Um, so we were talking, and he was pretty good about what he's been doing this season long, and it's it was great talking to him. I told him how he has been having a good season this year. A young guy making an impact, a freshman midfielder out of North Olmstead. Look to get things going and really help control that midfield here tonight. Garibaldi coming back to that, and it is Reyes. Reyes picks it up, looking for the through ball. Kane going to be in a foot race, but he's just going to be off sides, and the line judge here on the near side puts the flag up. He's on top of that one. Of course, that's kind of been a bit of a theme all season long for the old jackets. It's that, you know, you see a lot of offsides calls, and once again, I feel like that's the aggressiveness, greedy gameplay from BW all season through these first eight games and it's been working really well despite the many offsides calls I've seen so far I mean eight games and you haven't lost yet Surowitz tried to flick that one instead of settling it and controlling possession Ooh. battle there for the ball and Corsi comes in hard wins the ball and can't believe that the challenge went against him Official taking a look at the Earlham player and making sure he's okay. Keeling, the experienced captain, having his teammates back away there. and Not argue that one. I think the reason why it went against Corsi, Corsi jumped in and no reason for there to be a card, but I think just a little bit of a higher boot. Wasn't really coming in maliciously with studs or anything like that again. Hope that their Earlham player is okay. But a brief injury timeout here down on the field. And that's going to allow us to quickly talk about some of the great sponsors here for Yellow Jacket Athletics. And a reminder that this match this evening for men's soccer is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, proud medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, and Dan Andrews. And Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Well, it looks like he's about to get up, which is a very good sign. Looks to be number 
16 KO blow again, I believe. Yeah, it looks like it's actually number 18, oh. Thato Saolo, the senior. Looks like he this spent some time in uh, Costa Rica as well there. So, again, hopefully he is okay. The defender. And it looks like he's just going to step out on the sideline and try to get right back into this. Quick breather. Shake off that knock and be right back in here as soon as the official waves him back on. To me, the six looked like the eight, so I apologize for that, folks. Ball launched in the box. Initial header won by the Yellow Jackets. Garibaldi tried to flick that on for himself, run onto it, and get out in transition. A little too hard on the header. Out for a Quaker's throw. And good to see Saolo right back into the game. Yes, you never want to see anyone hurt. That's for sure. Clever um, little flick on by Surowitz and Yellow Jackets coming back in transition the other way. Tommy Booser on the overlap. Going to play this one back and just work it around the defense. So it's still 0-0 zero, zero as that kick goes way high and way to the right. Owen Reyes, the freshman midfielder on that. Yeah, Reyes, the midfielder getting forward from outside the 18. Thought about that. Leaning back and sailing that one high. And you're going to see the Yellow Jackets be aggressive. After earlier this week, they know they can score some goals. They're going to look to take any opportunity that you give them. Good clear away right there. Maybe an awkward hop there for Ham, but this experienced senior defender knew as long as he used any other body part aside from his foot there, playing it back to Nagy. Goalkeeper could pick that one up. Nagy was on top of that one coming to the ball as well. Great communication from the defense. The Yellow Jackets, some excellent one-two touch passing here and some tight space here on the near side. And now I'm going to switch and get out to the other side. Radella, the left center back. Booser, left-footed cross. Again, a predominantly right-footed player. Likes to cut in and whip those crosses in with the left foot. Unable to get the curl, the whip into the box. That one came pretty straight off of the boot and sailed up and over the crossbar there. Meant to cross that. Wasn't aiming to go towards goal there. Heavy touch. Going to be last off of the Quakers. Out for Yellow Jackets throw. And by the looks of it, Nick Young's doing it from Wandsworth High School. He is a sophomore 6'1". Garibaldi launches this one in the 18. Just hung up high in the middle, and Earlham only able to get as far as the 30 on the football hashes, and Reyes played it back to Ham. Out to Young, and Young, another cross into the box. Booster looking to settle. Pressure being applied from behind. And by the looks of it, the Quakers are going to take it when they have a good opportunity right here. Pass a little bit behind. It allows white jerseys to get back in cover. So the 2v2 in transition is a little bit too slow for Earlham there. And the midfield did an excellent job for the Yellow Jackets getting back, helping out their defense, slowing it down, winning it back. And we played just over 10 minutes here in the first half. Still nil-nil. Nagy finds Rudella. Split to Garibaldi. A really smart run, just finding some open space. Ham stepping forward. Keeling's drifted out here to the right-hand side. He wants to look towards the back post in the direction of Kane, who's going to spin off. He'll get to it first. Defender tight on him. Stumbles, but stays on his feet. Step over. Wants to get to that right foot. Played it inside, and nice run by Corsi. Just a little bit too hard, far ahead of him. Got his toe on it into the hands of Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith has had somewhat of a barrage today, but he has done a good job with it. 
Definitely getting away with a lot of shots, but not too many shots on goal as the balls seem to be flying way over his head. And I think that's going to be BW's ball 12 minutes through this half. Well, really no shots for the goalkeeper here yet this evening that he's faced. There's been some crosses there in the box. He's come out, he's picked up a few. A lot of action in front of him, but really nothing he's had to do here so far. Maybe Nagy gets some of his first action on the night. Hasn't had to do too much. Hold the ball out a couple times here for his teammates, but excellent tackle there, 1v1. And BW gets it back. Pass squanders possession there. No foul. Ball one back for BW. Rodella out to Ham. Ham has about 20 yards of space there. He can take the space if he wants. And Reyes checks back and wants this defeat. And so at midfield, here are the old jackets as that one goes over to Trevor Ham on the right side. Young. Uh, Hard pass to Reyes. He takes it off the chest. Finds a teammate. Surowitz, if he can get a shot off, it's blocked the first time. Played back. Keeling wants it with the left foot. Deflected again, but Booser making his run forward. Saw a lot of that earlier this week. Booser's again showing his ability to get forward from left back. Rodella wins it back. Still in the final third. Surowitz. Takes the shot with the left foot. The initial save. And it still scoots through into the goal. Nick Surwitz. Give him another one. He broke the deadlock. Got the first goal of the night. On Tuesday night against Hiram. He gets the first one this evening. 1-0. Yellow Jackets. That's the usual suspect. Nick Surwitz. Surwitz keeps on scoring. Think he's the lead scorer for the Yellow Jackets. Well, yes, he is. He now has six goals and 14 points. If you can stop him, that's a good sign, but it's pretty hard to stop him. So Tyler Smith got his paw to that. Just not able to keep that ball out of the back of the net. It had just a little bit too much pace. And despite what looked like what might end up being a save, still skipped through. And as you mentioned, Surwitz now with six on the season. Now, I'm not sure if the nickname has changed for Surwitz, but I know earlier in his, his career, teammates used to refer to him as Saucy Surowitz. And uh, a nice, clever finish there from him. He faked the shot with his right foot. And faking that shot with his right foot got the defender to step. And then he was able to cut that one over to his left foot clear a little bit of space to get the shot off and he was able to like I said send that one home and break the deadlock here and the Yellow Jackets really doing exactly what they did on Tuesday haven't really lost a beat at all starting exactly where they left off yep getting right back to where they began with and trying to do even more than what they did last time, which was back on, I think, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, that was Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. the 20. Wait, no, that was actually Wednesday the 21st. So, trying to pick up right where they left off, and by the looks of it, they're off to a pretty darn good start. We're more than a third of the way through the half, and it's one nothing. We'll see if this continues, or if Earlham, the Quakers, can get something cooking. Throw in, and Keeling finds Reyes, who plays it back to Rodella. Rodella being chased from behind. He takes a look over his shoulder, realizes he needs to get this one away. Here's Boozer on the overlap as Kane played it to him. 1v1, wants to put his head down and run at him, using the speed with the left foot in the middle. Surwitz gets the header, and that one would have been on frame. Just deflected. A couple of those maroon jerseys just in the way there. Keeling tracking back, winning it back. Keeling a very 
attacking minded player early in his career still obviously has that ability but the defensive ability has stepped up with age Good Buser. kick by Buser. Playing this one into the middle. He saw the run of Kane. Put it on his head. Wasn't too much pace on that cross. So Kane had to generate that power. Just not enough there to get it by the goalkeeper. And maybe if it would have been headed a little bit farther to the back post. Would have gone in. Smith just had to go a little bit to his right. And made the save there. A nice lunging save too may I say. Just a good job by Tyler Smith. He is a junior from Germantown, Ohio. So he did a good job out there. We'll see if he can continue to keep it a one nothing contest. Keeling has a lot of space. Finds Booster out on the far side. Tried to play a one-touch ball up to Surowitz, who has drifted from the middle of the field out to the left wing. He and Kane have temporarily switched. Ham, pressure applied on his left. Finds Garibaldi and pass was a little hard for Garibaldi there. Tried to slide and play that one away. Earlham squandering possession though, sending it all the way back to Nagy. And he's just able to feed Radella who has a lot of space there and finds Kane. Excellent through ball. And it looks like the Yellow Jackets still have it. Under 27 minutes to go in this uh, first half. So Keeling, and that one takes a hop and goes directly to Tyler Smith. Could see he was looking actually to the back post. The run of Kane off of the back shoulder of the far side defender. That one didn't come off exactly how Keeling wanted it. Curled actually a little bit and went right up the middle rather than out to the far side. Here's Earlham. Haven't spent too much time in their attacking third and when they have gotten down past really the 30 yard line on the football hashes. No link up play and a lot of just turning the ball right back over to the Yellow Jackets. And now it looks like they have an opportunity out there on the right side but it's going to be broken up by the Quakers. Young applying the pressure on Paganelli. Young tracking back and taking this off of the foot of Gintner. Garibaldi to Young. Young up the line, and that one's just going to stay in. Surowitz forcing Ginn to go all the way back to his goalkeeper and played out by Tyler Smith. Now going to be a Yellow Jackets throw. And it looks like once again, it's going to be on the right side. Yeah, going to be an opportunity here on a free kick for the Yellow Jackets. Dylan Keeling comes over again. Mentioned he really serves as like a set-piece specialist. Now Brandon Garibaldi is going to join him. He's going to step over this one. Keeling to the back post. And that header won by Earlham, but it's going to skip off the back of the defender's head. It will be out for a corner, so Keeling going to switch to the other side of the field. Go across to hit this in swinger. Of course, Dylan Keeling, as we mentioned multiple times today, is that specialty when it comes to corner kicks and free kicks. And he earns it. He's pretty good at what he does when it comes to that. Puts this one more towards the near post. Just got over the head of Surowitz and the punch by Smith. Earlham needs to get it out. Reyes slides. Excellent job wow. keeping it in. And I think he's going to draw a foul here as well. He poked it around the defender. Caught uh -oh. Ginn sleeping. And a little stamp there on the boot of Reyes. Again, hopefully he is okay. But that was a really clever play from the freshman midfielder. And of course, once... We uh, get back to action here following this brief little pause in action with the injury timeout. 
Dylan Keeling going to have another opportunity to put it in the box from a set piece. Yeah, that looked like he went down hard, but Owen Reyes with some good hustle out there. And he ultimately paid the price right there, but let's hope he can get better and get better soon. And Reyes is going to get to his foot here right now. Seems to be okay. Again, just like a, looked like a little stamp there. Incidental there from Ginn as he was trying to get to that ball. Most impressive thing for Reyes there, he ran that one down, and obviously he slid and kept the control. Most impressive thing is with the defender quickly approaching, he got back to his feet so quickly that he was able to play that ball right around the defender and draw that contact. So clock still stopped, of course, because of that injury timeout. 24 minutes remaining here in the half. Hadn't seen any substitutions yet for either team. But now we do have a substitution as Reyes is going to check out. And into the match for the first time tonight. Looks like number 14, Ben McCauley. McCauley is a freshman as well so a freshman replaces a freshman we get play going again here Keeling to the back post header one by Earlham flick this one up in the air Rodella with the left foot excellent play out to the far side it's a low shot by Kane deflected at the near post still rolls out all the way to Kane out on the far side a one two attempt there Garibody keeping it in just in on the in line there. Kane wanting to turn, drops his shoulder. 1v1 again to Gary Body. And Gary Body can play this one back to Booster. A lot of action there. And it's not done yet. Earlham still needing to defend. Here's Young. Cutting in. Wants one with the left foot. Saw it open up. He had the opportunity to fire again with his weaker left foot and just drug that one far to the right. It will be a goal kick and several more substitutions for BW. That was a great effort by Nick Young, but once again, as you mentioned, a little to the right. As El Hodge Ba comes in for the Yellow Jackets. Number six Ba in as well as number 26 Michael Tusik over here on the right wing. Throw in and Kane down in the corner. Looks like that last touch is gonna be off of Earlham. So another corner kick for the Yellow Jackets. Well, we have basically reached the halfway point in this first half and it's still a one nothing contest in favor of those Yellow Jackets trying to go eight zero and one, which will Mark the halfway point of their season. Keeling looking towards that front post. He hit that one a little bit low. It hit the defender and didn't have a chance to get into the box. But Yellow Jackets fighting for it at the top of the 18. Earlham able to get it clear. Keeling tracking back and wins it back. Ball turning. Getting his head up. Finding Surowitz. Opportunity to play this one back to McCauley. And he does. Out to Young. Making a run up from right back. The cross, and it was deflected. Looked like it might drift out for a corner. Instead, right at the near post, Tyler Smith able to catch it. Good job there by Smith. And now he's going to take his time and let this one go deep towards the middle. 50-50 ball, that header won by Rodella. Going to take a hop out. Going to be last off of the Yellow Jackets here, though. And Earlham, a throw on the far side. As Caleb Wilgen will throw this one in. Here's Surowitz with the outside of the right boot. Finds McCauley, who needs to settle, and he does. Hamden McCauley right at midfield, and the substitute... Freshman making a mistake there that coaching staff won't be happy with. Keeling was wide open, should have been able to find his feet, but it won't matter because the Yellow Jackets 
Have it right back. Here's Surowitz. Looking to get on his right foot. Wants to fire with the curler. Aim towards the back post. He's trying to start that one wide and curl it in. Not enough there and looked like it was well wide right. Goal kick and danger averted for the Quakers. How lucky was that? I mean, so many shots, but not too many shots on goal here for the Yellow Jackets today. Unfortunate for Keeling there as that one pops up and hits his left hand. Ball back in play. Couple passes stringing things together, but then launching it down the field and VW winning the header. Really those 50-50 balls. Yellow Jackets have been first to them. And that's allowed them to continue to keep winning the ball back and control the game as they have done. So under 20 minutes here left. Yellow Jackets want more on the attack again. Kane keeping it in play. A little bit of a nudge throws off Kane. Not able to get the power there on that cross in and only played out here as far as about midfield where Ham comes back and tracks that one down. So 1917 left in this first half and very uh, different compared to our first game in which we had a lot of scoring on one side and no scoring from the other. Out here we're seeing not that much scoring at all. Rodello's wide open and left center back and Ham does find him. He's got plenty of space pushing forward and all 10 of those field players aside from the goalkeeper on the Quaker side of the field here right now really pushed forward keeping them pinned in and as soon as Earlham wins that ball back they're struggling to get out of their own end before the Yellow Jackets pounce on it again Keeling getting his head up wants this with the left foot right to Smith though and he gets another save had it on frame just not the pace that Keeling would have wanted again a right footed player hitting that one from distance with the left so the Yellow Jack is getting their chances getting shots off only the one goal to show for it here so far and that could have been a great opportunity for Earlham hit off of the heel of number nine Gwyn a uh, challenge there from Booster and it looks like he maybe caught the Earlham player nothing too major there is a little bit of contact officials say play on nothing major enough for a penalty being awarded the through ball flicked through chipped into the hands of Nagy and really Earlham didn't protest that one too much that's very lucky I must say because had that been a foul that would have been penalty kick and considering the fact that penalty kicks are always really hard especially for the goaltenders it could quite easily be a tight game had Buser made a little more contact with him that one rolled all the way back to Smith and Smith with his feet just looking for some help from his team next dead ball we're gonna see several substitutions looks like three yellow jackets at the scores table as well as three Quakers hop up into the thigh of Keeling he chips this one forward to Young mentioned Booser's willingness at left back to get forward but Young also very well willing to get forward himself see the trust that the team has in the center backs to stay back and really control everything and make sure nothing happens as both full backs are bombing forward. 16-20 off now and oh nice Young, cross. The cross across the six to Surowitz at the back post. A finish and a goal for the Yellow Jackets up 2-0. And actually a little bit of questioning here going to be a talk with the official here over on the far side and this might actually be offsides as yes this one did roll into the back of the net for BW but Mike Kane the freshman 
Might have just been a little bit off there. That is unfortunate. So close to making it 2 nothing, but a race a goal. And it will most likely be one nothing with 16 minutes and 15 seconds. So nearly 2-0. Take the goal off of the scoreboard. And a lot of credit to Nick Young. Getting forward, delivering a beautiful ball into the box. Surowitz, he was trying to put that one on frame. He was a little bit wide left. And Kane lurking at the back post tapped it in. Problem is... He had made that run forward, and because he made that run forward, looking for that cross from Young, as soon as it hit the foot of Surowitz, he was behind all the defenders. And that resulted in that offside. Oh, so close. Yellow Jacket's not going to be too happy with it, but here is the, the thing they can feel good about. Despite that not being a goal, being up 1-0, really dominating. If you keep doing what you're doing, it's hard to believe that they wouldn't end up getting another goal here at some time soon, maybe even some point here before half. Here's all those substitutions that I mentioned just a moment ago. Both teams making a lot of changes, getting a lot of fresh legs on the field. It's all on game. It's 90 minutes of running back and forth and trying to get the ball in the net. It's easier said than done. So getting the substitutions in is crucial and critical when it comes to winning games. Here's the throw for the Quakers. Booser wins the throw. Couple headers back and forth. Tusik looking to turn. Drops his shoulder. Turns on the Jets. He's got a couple white jerseys ahead of him. Overlapping run. McCauley. McCauley back across the six. Tusik was oh so close to getting to that one. Earlham in some tight space. Slide there and just a little bit of a nick. Ginn playing this one forward. Going to be a foul call there. I actually think Ginn maybe took a little bit more of a bump on the one he didn't go down on compared to when he just played that ball on Keeling. Oh, so caught him. Just a little bit of a touch there. Official calls the foul. And Earlham gets it back into play quickly. And that one's going out on Earlham, which means that the Yellow Jackets will get it with about 14 minutes to go in this contest, and Earlham takes it back. So plenty of white jerseys back defending. And very optimistic if that was a shot, catching the outside of the net. Well, Getting... it did hit the net. It just hit the wrong part of the net, that's all. Very optimistic because that's an extremely tough angle. No chance you're beating Nagy from there. Need to pull that one back, play it across the box and see if you get a teammate crashing in and can get to that one. Yakim into the game for the first time tonight. Second leading scorer for the Yellow Jackets. Now in transition. Daniel Kahindi. Holding off Booser. Strong challenge. Tackle there and foul going to be called. And Earlham now gets a great opportunity. So only one shot for them yet on the night. But would assume from the spot here on this free kick, going to be looking to put this one on frame. And just for comparison, BW has 11 shots, but just four of them on goal, but still... That is a huge difference maker in determining who wins the game and who doesn't. If you can get more shots on goal, chances are you're probably going to win that contest. Here's the left-footed strike there, and it takes a skip harmlessly into the arms of Nagy. Pusser on the touchline on the far side. Run forward from Yakim. The Yellow Jackets are running fast and furious here. Played that one to the back post, headed away. And coming back the other way in transition. 
Under 12 minutes to go and still one nothing. Could have been 2 nothing, but I believe Mike Kane was the guy who was offside. Ooh, he went down hard right there. Great challenge there from McCall. He stuck his foot in there. Just planted, didn't kick through that ball. Stuck it down, defender went over his leg. Excellent win of the ball. Win again here, two sick in transition. Turning on the Jets. Again, playing tight defense, but it's gonna be last off of Earlham. A corner once again for the Yellow Jackets. First time here from the near side of the field taking a corner. All of Keeling's other corners so far had been in swingers for him. And we'll see if he tries to get some whip to curl this one away or if he tries to get the laces through it and really drive that one a little bit more straight into the box. Instead, Julian Quieres, he wants this one. He puts this one into the middle. Initially won by Earlham, only out as far as number 13, Muhammad. And he didn't settle that one. Very optimistic on the half volley in the right back. Another one of those subs who came in a couple minutes ago sails that one way over, way r wide right. There will still be many opportunities to make it up throughout this game. We still have 55 and a half minutes left in the contest. So it's still not over. Anything can happen. Is this one going to be thrown in at literally midfield? So Muhammad gets to that one. Ham's still going to have to clean it up. Plays this one out the other direction. Settled there. Squandering possession away, though, is Wilgen fired that one towards his forward. Yakim overlapping Kieres. Kieres looking for that run of Tusik. And what I'm loving right now from that front three that's in right now, I saw it from the starting group as well. So fluid, willing to change positions. Cross in the middle. Corralled by Smith. Good job by Tyler Smith once again. There are now 12 shots for the All Jackets today compared to two from the Quakers. Foot race there is Kahindi trying to get to that one and Nagy commanding his box coming out, picking that one up. Under 10 left to go here in the first half, still 1-0 Yellow Jackets. Ball to Keeling. One touch ball out to Rodella. Looking in the middle, really no white jerseys available for him there. Heavy touch there from Ham. Really no issue there on that. As Kahindi couldn't do anything with it, a very heavy touch, and Nagy got his offense going again. Muhammad. Keeling out to Rodella. Those maroon jerseys just really packed in, getting buried deep into their own end. And they're content to let the center backs have the ball and just come at them. That's going to be a foul on the Yellow Jackets. An opportunity for Earlham to send the ball the other direction. And that comes with eight minutes to go as it looks like Earlham will be kicking this one following the foul. Header one by Keeling. McCauley. Kierez. He wants this one to the back post. And this one's going to be offsides as Yakum started his run a little bit early. Kierez honestly... Could have taken that one himself and looked to go 1v1 with the defender in front of him, get into the box. I had a feeling that he kicked it all too far and kicked too far he did. Saw the attempt there is Yakim again. Really that number nine, that center striker, but he's drifted out to the left wing at the moment. Talked about the interchanging between these wingers. And with their center striker as well, they are just drifting all over the place, making it difficult for the defense really to follow their runs. 
Under seven minutes to go till we hit the half. Still a little too early before I talk to you about what you think the halftime adjustments and halftime game plans are going to be. But still, the half's almost done with. And you got to assume that Earl is probably going to make a push. Whoa, sorry for that voice crack. <laughs> Free kick here from the far side with the left foot to the back post. And a shove there. The header was won by Earlham. But, of course, that was because of the push in the back. And Aiel, like I said, was the one trying to get to that one there. So Yellow Jackets still doing well defensively. Can they get one more on the board before we go to the locker rooms here? About six minutes left. Muhammad, the header. This one going to get to ball to the back post if he can win it. Yakim, tackle there. Ball with the shot from in close. Tyler Smith cut out the angle. He made the save there. But the Yellow Jackets have a corner. Just a good job there. By Tyler Smith. Once again, he's been having a barrage all day. And once again, it's going to be another, what do you call it, corner kick today for those Yellow Jackets. Kira's from the far side. Into the box. Right over the head of Smith. And I think the official was sorting some things out there with some pushing and shoving and talking things over with the players in the middle, letting them know. I'm paying attention stop let's break this up didn't want the kick from Kieras to come so we're going to retake this here just trying to put a crowd around the goalkeeper put it on his head to the back post Ba gets to it headed around in the middle and Erlum does get it away for now at least here's Tusik a little that bit awkward for him Trying to turn on the Jets and get down the far side. But this one going to be played out. Will be a Yellow Jackets throw. As Alex Gibson getting some of his first action for the Yellow Jackets. He was the one applying the pressure off to the far side, tracking back. I heard it, number eight, Alex Gibson, the sophomore from nearby Olmstead Falls, has checked in for BW during these last four minutes, roughly. Tusik trying to shield that one off. Has it again, Muhammad slides for that ball. It's going to leak through in the direction of Kierez. Cleared out by Barry. Throw for the Yellow Jackets. And taken away by Earlham. Just playing it down the middle again. They really can't find that ball to connect with their striker. Poor touch there from Muhammad. Took a look up. Wasn't paying attention to where that line was. And ball just drifted out of play. Now a throw for Earlham. Three minutes remaining here in the half. This one thrown in the direction of Biondi. Went up for that header with Ham. Ham won it. Bouncing around the middle. Tusik. Been showing off his speed. Been flying around here this evening. Erlem wins that ball back and has played inside the 18. Kehindi, closest one there. McCauley turns. There's about 10 yards of space ahead of him. Clever passing there. Kieras is in. He was looking for that shot, and he took that touch, put it out in front of him, was about to fire, and just slowed down a little bit as he wanted that shot. Defender came across. Out for a corner once again. Good job to take it away by the Quakers. They'll get away with one for now. We'll see if they'll get away with it for good. So Tusik there, the short option, 
two defenders close, and this one's going to be played in the middle. Only out as far as McCauley. And about the 30 on the football hashes. Tried to play this one down the line for Radella. Throw for Earlham. Trying to dribble through a couple white jerseys. And ball with a nice little turn. And then slips. Manages to keep possession there. Awkward for him. Under 90 seconds left. We'll see if the Yellow Jackets make one last push before the half end. By the looks of it, they probably are. Just stretching out Biondi. Out for a throw, and BW gets it back into play. On the clearance, Ham heads it over to Booser. One minute remaining here in the first half. And that's going to slow things down. Unlikely that the Yellow Jackets are really going to have another chance here before the end of the half. After that foul, though, Earlham does get it back into play here quickly. Not much time ticked off the clock, 45 seconds. And as the Yellow Jackets get possession again, turn it over from that tight pressure there. Here's a shot from distance with the left foot. Paganelli sailing that one wide right, and Nagy was not troubled. He knew what was not on frame. So what do you talk about if you're Coach Ayers at the half? Really same thing as Tuesday, honestly. You were controlling possession. Your attack has been impressive. Uh, you're getting those opportunities. I think the biggest thing is we do go to half, and we're down to five seconds here left, and it's going to be out for a throw. That's going to do it for the half, and it's going to wrap up 1-0. So as I was mentioning, I think it's just going to be a matter of keep doing what you've been doing. Come out with the intensity. Let's not let off. Let's make sure we keep bringing it. We want to put more goals up on the board. But defensively, very sound. Getting the opportunities. Just a matter of there have been a couple times where there have been some passes that have gone awry that have started some transitions. Earlham has not taken advantage. Some other teams, uh, especially when you get into conference play, Again, they could easily capitalize on that stuff. So sure it up. Make sure there's not too much where you're gifting them transition opportunities. Aside from that, everything really, really good. If you're Earlham, the biggest thing for them is a matter of we got to find a way to get the ball. And when we do get the ball, we need to make sure that we're going with speed and transition. And that's something I think that they've slowed down too much. They haven't been able to capitalize on really any opportunities because they haven't had too many at this point they need to get runners forward and part of that is they don't have help for those forwards because their defense has been settled so far back their whole team's been pinned back in their own half so we're going to take a break here for the next 14 minutes make sure if you step away to come right back you're watching and listening live on bwyellowjackets.com the home of all yellow jacket athletics i'm cole mcdaniel with me tommy maroon we'll be back after this break don't move
And we're back here on BWYellowJackets.com following the conclusion of halftime. Getting ready for the start of the second half where the Yellow Jackets hold a 1-0 advantage over the visiting Earlham Quakers from Indiana. Again, I'm Cole McDaniel. With me tonight, Tommy Maroon. And as we're about to get the second half underway, we can take a quick look back at what we saw in the first half. Shots between these two teams... Really not much happening on the offensive end for Earlham. Just three shots and only one of those on goal. That was from dead ball. So nothing from live action from the actual play of in-game and the ball moving around, passing around. It was only from that set piece on the free kick that was on frame. For the Yellow Jackets, though, they've had plenty of opportunities. 14 shots, five of them on goal, forcing four saves from goalkeeper Tyler Smith. Yellow Jackets will be attacking from right to left on your screen as they get the second half started. Of course, in their white jerseys. And Earlham in the maroon jerseys down there on the field. And if you missed the first half and just now tuning in, breaking the deadlock in the 14th minute was Nick Surowitz, the leading scorer on the season for the Yellow Jackets. And by the looks of it, both teams are just about ready to break huddle. I think they're going to talk over the game plans. And, of course, so many opportunities for the Yellow Jackets in the first half. But it's kind of surprising that it's just a one-goal game. And Earlham is pretty darn lucky to be down by just one at the half. It could quite easily be, you know, two or three. So tonight's Yellow Jacket men's soccer match is being brought to you by the Oswald Company, Risk and Insurance Leaders since 1893, Chuck Rotuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider, and Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. And here is the whistle and the kick for the second half. Quick pressure being applied by the Yellow Jackets. Flying forward and Keeling wins it. Maybe an opportunity in transition. Finds Reyes. Reyes cutting in on his left foot. Tackle in and one back. And Yellow Jackets not letting off here already in the first 30 seconds. Good kick right there to number 34, Mike Kane. Kane playing this back in the direction of Surowitz. Didn't get his hips turned around that one. Need it more angled to Surowitz back here, but it doesn't necessarily matter as official was trying to play advantage. And then pulls this one back for the free kick. Smart officiating down there on the field, and now Keeling put this one down. A lot of runners there on the back post. Instead, going to play it short to Ham. Ham feeds this out to Young on the far side. Puts this into the box. Surowitz was lurking. Of course, he keeps this in play. Booser, right foot, floats it to the back post. Header by Surowitz. Little deflection. Took the pace off of that one. And easy bounce up into the arms of Smith. I think that's now 15 shots for the Yellow Jackets. And their 6-1 on goal. Wasn't a very dramatic shot as it definitely ran out of juice by the time it went to Tyler Smith. Booster nearly gives that one away. Reyes feeds the right back young to Garibaldi. Surowitz running the channel on the far side. Sticking the foot in there is Barry and the left center back wins it back for his team. Tried to play it down the field and it Bounced off of Garibaldi out for a Quaker's throw. This one gets to the forward. Opens his hips. Plays it out to the left wing. Left back again. Finding his teammate there, Kahindi. Poor pass and turns this one over. Corsi in transition. Cut out. Still plenty of white jerseys back. But Earlham trying to go with speed. Gentner. Cutting in. 
Back to Barry. Heavy touch. Corsi was closing in. Pass does make its way all the way over to Wilgen. No foul called. Challenge from behind, and Kane wanted a foul. Bodies continuing to hit the floor. Officials letting them play on here. Start of the second half. Garibaldi into the middle. Intercepted by Hernandez. Gives it right back. An attempt at the 1 2 between Surowitz and Keeling. A little bit off of the page there between the two. A miscommunication and back the other way. That has way too much, doesn't it? Yeah, heavy touch there. Going to be out for a throw very, very deep into the corner for BW. And Kahindi, the forward from Texas, has had a hard time. Up there, keeping possession of the ball for his team. Some heavy touches. Looks like that's going to be Bone Wallace's ball more than four minutes into this second half. And it's still one nothing Yellow Jackets. And once again, going to be their ball. Again, if you're just now tuning in, missed the first half. A reminder that the Yellow Jackets still undefeated on the season. 7-0-1 through non-conference play. As for Earlham, coming into the night 3-3-1 three, three and one. on a three-game losing streak and trying to turn the tides, but right now everything's been going the way of BW. Going to be an uphill battle for the Quakers. As for the Yellow Jackets, really on an excellent five-game win streak since that lone draw that they had. Here's the corner. From the far side of the field for Keeling. Puts both hands up. Drives this one towards the back post. Tried to get his laces through that. And out of play, that one landed on the roof of the goal. Seventh corner kick today for the Yellow Jackets. I've noted that they've had a lot and a lot of opportunities today, but just one goal to show for it. Smith going to play this one long, pushing his team forward. Out to the near side here. Heavy challenge in by Booser, but Paganelli initially was able to keep a hold of it. Booser comes away in transition, wants the shot. Maybe could have played Garibaldi off to the right-hand side, but actually that bump from behind on the shot called a foul. And a free kick opportunity for the Yellow Jackets. Now, a reminder that earlier in the week, it was on Tuesday. Of course, the women played here the following night. But on Tuesday against Hiram, Nick Surowitz hit a beautiful free kick. Now, it was a little farther back, a little bit closer to the stands here on this side. But he got up and over the wall and dropped it down and skipped it in at the near post. Now, from a little bit more in the middle of the field, I would assume to see Surowitz want this one again. It is going to be Surowitz. Low deflection. Goal again. Two on the night for Surowitz. And that deflection helped him out. Lucky number seven for Nick Surowitz on the season and his second of the night. He is once again being a difference maker out there. The senior really stepping it up as the Yellow Jackets are trying to go through the entire uh, non-conference play this season without dealing with a loss. So a little hard to see from this angle. Not sure if he was trying to get that one up and over the wall, but it, or he actually was truly trying to curl it around the right side of that wall. Again, it actually looked like a hit off of maybe about the knee of the farthest player in that wall there. It was going to be on frame. Goalkeeper and Smith was diving to his right, but that deflection took it back the other direction. Nothing he can do about that was helpless there in the goal. It's now 
2-0 like I had already mentioned. So a lot of time on the clock. 37 minutes left to go in this one. Nagy bombs this one forward in the direction of Garibaldi. Keeling a long ball. Maybe a chase here if Kane can get to it. Headed back by Hernandez. Kane's going to be able to get there. Shield it off. And that will be a corner again. The eighth one of the night for the Yellow Jackets. As they have had once again a lot of opportunities. But only two goals to show for it. 17 shots, seven of them on goal, which is pretty impressive. We'll see if they can capitalize on what's another big opportunity. This corner coming from the right boot of Keeling. Hanging this one up on the head of Smith. Smith gets the punch, only out as far as the top of the 18. Picked up and fed from Morial to his center forward, Kahindi. One back by Reyes. Young coming forward. Wants this one. Leaning back. Up and through the goalpost there on the football uprights. And that went all the way up to the grass behind the student section from earlier today. Deflection there. This one going to be last off of Corsi out for an Earlham throw. quickly turning that one over but going to be able to maybe get this one back bouncing back and forth between these two teams again this should be an Earlham throw Kane wanted it there Wilgen finds Morial turn there and trying to go with some speed is Kimball needs some help and I'm not quite sure exactly what that ball was there, but maybe going to be able to keep that one in play in the corner. I think Paganelli was maybe wanting to hit a shot there. Instead, came off all the way to the corner. Scoop there from Surowitz. Nifty play, but the pressure applied, and now Earlham puts this one into the box at the back post. Booser, the bat farthest back guy, gets the header away. Now Keeling, out in transition to Garibaldi. Garibaldi has Keeling in the middle. Reyes to his left as well. Cuts in. Maybe wants the shot with the right foot. And this one going to be deflected out. No, actually, they're going to say it's going to be last off of Garibaldi. Clever run. Just going to result in a goal kick. All right, 34 minutes to go. You know what that means? We've played about a little over 10 minutes of this second half, and the Old Jackets have doubled their lead from 1 to 2. While that may not sound like much, considering how this game has gone, that's pretty impressive. Ham to the back post, Surowitz. One touch, looking in the middle in the direction of Kane. Cut out by Earlham. Only out as far as midfield. Back to Rodella, the left center back. A Strongsville partnership between the two center backs. A little bit different with experience, though, is Trevor Ham, a senior. Thomas Rodella, a very talented freshman. Those guys have really been locking it down in the early stages here of this season. After the foul, a free kick for Keeling. Looking for Young, farthest back defender. Heads that one away. Back to the feet of Smith. Clears this one to the near side. Kept in by Muriel. Nice header back finding his teammate. Here's Muriel again. and He's probably been one of the more threatening players here in the second half. Somebody to watch out for if you are the Quakers. Kane has a lot of space here from left wing. Tracking back there. Step over. Kane nearly wins it back as he was trying to take that off of the foot of Kimball. Surowitz sitting on two goals. Finding Reyes. 
Reyes wants the shot from outside the 18 is deflected. And by the looks of it, Olam's going to get away with another opportunity from the Yellow Jackets. Doubled there. Surowitz to Kane. On the run. Kane takes a far slide after that challenge. It's going to be last off of Hernandez. Once again, a corner for BW. How many corn kicks has... Uh... Earlham had today. Well, so far, Not too many. No, and so far in this one, still no corners yet for the Quakers. Yellow Jackets, this will be their ninth. That's what I thought. Keeling plays this one out to Reyes. It leaks all the way through to Kane. Kane with the one touch. Fired that one and had some nice curl on it, but it was a little bit low and not able to find its way through the crowd. Still the Yellow Jackets have it in the final third. Garibaldi back across the six, headed away at the near post. On oh, miscommunication there. Trying to touch this one around Corsi. Gets a cheer from the fans here on the home side. Now Muriel finding Paganelli in the middle and Poked away by Keeling. And he cannot believe there is no foul. Driven ball with the laces. Surowitz is running in the middle. If Garibaldi can find him across the six. Diving save by Smith. Needed to make that save because Surowitz was lurking. That one out on the Quakers. Tommy Buser's throwing that in. With 31 minutes left in this contest. So substitution is... Kane's going to go to the bench. Tusik into the match. Kane's been very aggressive, making a lot of runs. A well-deserved breather for him. And Tusik, impressed with what I saw in the first half, has that speed, can really drop that shoulder and turn. Relentless when it comes to going at a defender. And if you are a defender on this near side, Booser running forward from left back and Tusik being at left wing, has to be terrifying for you. You know you're going to be running a lot and covering a lot. Here's Surwitz. Turns. He wants it for three. No hat trick yet for Surwitz, but he's going to keep looking and keep firing. That one just a little bit up and over the bar. Still a good effort nonetheless by Surwitz. He's hungry for a hat trick, isn't he? He definitely wants it. And he's going to continue to look for it. And that one was oh so close. Smith was there. Got his hand up. Really just about a foot over the bar, though. Here is Tusik, who just subbed in. Threw ball to Surowitz with the left foot. Not able to make it over the center back in the middle. Threw ball here, and Young covering and getting back. Tusik dropped into the midfield. Sitting deep here now. And the Yellow Jackets can reset offensively. Now a little pressure being applied by Earlham and great job getting through that pressure. Diagonal run. Instead coming back to the near side. Heavy touch inside and taken off the foot of Wilgen. 1-2, two, Tusik into the 18, looking back across the six, cleared away by Hernandez at the near post, unable to find feet. Just needed the help of some of those runners. But again, playing across the six is oh so dangerous. And the Yellow Jackets getting into some great spaces there when they're getting around that end line. Off the back of number nine, Gwyn. Looks like the Jackets are going to get it. Tusik floats it into the box. Just a little bit ahead of the run of Garibaldi. Skips up to Smith, and Smith finding an outlet, quickly trying to get his team started the other way, and a really nifty turn there on the far side. No foul called. Clean challenge by Reyes. 
Gets the Yellow Jackets back out on the break. Garibaldi going with speed. Trips up on the ball a little bit, but then the additional push at the end from behind results in a foul. It's finally going to slow the pace of this after it's been a track meet. Really even more so here in the second half compared to the first half. A lot of back and forth. Running with speed. And this just gives a little brief break in the action. 27 minutes remaining here. In the match, 2-0 for the Yellow Jackets looking to add a third. Keeling into the box towards the back post. Young, the closest one to it. Tusik got to it, hit the post. Trevor Ham, the senior defender, follows it up. And a tap-in goal for him, 3-0 BW. And looking at that, is that Trevor Ham's first goal of the season? I believe it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. And Trevor Ham, not a guy you're going to see on the score sheet too often. But again, does a lot of that dirty work back in the defense. A leader for the team, a captain. Keeps them organized, but you will on corners and free kicks. Where they're swinging it into the box, you'll see him go forward. And he capitalized on his opportunity. Now the L Jackets have a very comfy lead, three nothing, with 27 minutes left in this contest. So Kane checks back in here at left wing. Garibaldi subs out, and Michael Tusik switches over to the far side to right wing. This one flicked on a 50-50 between Gwyn and Keeling. Into the middle, look over the shoulder, Paganelli turning. Now going back to the far side. Reyes got crossed up right there. Again, the left back played it back to his teammate, still remains forward. Scramble for the ball there, and the Yellow Jackets are going to come away with it. Give it right back. Booser stops Muriel from turning. Going to be out for a Quaker's throw. And we'll have a substitution prior to that throw for, or for Earlham. Checking into the match, number 35. Nathan Lefkowitz. Lefkowitz is from all the way in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's quite a long flight, not just to here, but to Earlham as well, which is out in Indiana. Heavy challenge there. Uh-oh. Second time that Reyes has been down the ground following a heavy challenge. The official now stopping play. Didn't call a foul. Continue to let them play on, but an injury timeout once again, and almost wonder if that's the same boot that Reyes took the knock on in the first half. By the looks of it, it seems like he's tying his shoe for now. Let's hope he's fine. Yep, he looks fine. Yep, and help to his feet by Keeling. As we get things going again here in a moment, again, it's going to be on the whistle of the official. Going to be just a drop ball. He'll give this one right back to the goalkeeper as, as it was in the hands of Smith when he stopped play. And there is the blow of the whistle. And the clock should start running again. At least should have started already. It's still showing 25 minutes and four seconds, and now there goes. they get it going. Young finding Reyes, looking to put this one into the box, head away at the near post. Out to Keeling. Floats this one over to Young. He's on the run for it, trying to keep it in. Nice shield off by Kevin Ginn. 
goal kick. And several substitutions coming for both teams. We are almost halfway through this second half and the Yellow Jackets have one more goal in this half than they did in the first half, which means that they have two goals in the first or second half, one in the first, excuse me there. Reyes checks out, McCauley in for his first time this second half. Awkward contact there as <laughs> Yellow Jackets wanted a foul there. As Corsi turned, was looking at the official, wondering why he didn't get one, but it was actually Booser who ran through the back of him. Friendly fire there between the Yellow Jackets. They have possession of the ball. Nifty play there from Surowitz. Outside of the right boot, just playing around the defender, then tried to run the other direction around him and taken down. And quick free kick already taken. Trevor Ham was coming into the area. And Keeling chipped it up to him, and it was headed away now for a corner. And both center backs now joining the action moving forward. Keeling's ball hangs up to the back post. Ham rises the highest and gets to it. Met it at its highest point, but off of the top of the head. And that one goes straight up and out of play. Still 3-0. Turnover, dangerous spot. Surowitz turns, and he had Kane. If he could have gotten a touch there and could have easily played it to his teammate, would have been in on goal. Instead, Smith comes out and picks it up. Tusik dropping the shoulder on the run. Showing off that speed. He's got two white jerseys there in the middle. If he can find Surowitz. Tried to find him there. Just didn't make its way through. Boos are making that run forward and Last off of Erlem. Throw in a substitution for BW. Ethan Corsi, the freshman midfielder from Maslin Jackson. We'll check to the bench. Into the match, number 10, Matt Skladani. Skladani, just like Zoltan Aggie. From St. Ed's. Out in Lakewood. That should be last off of the heel of Earlham's forward. Kehindi. Booster throws it down the line. Kane back to Booster. Keeling's wide open in the middle. And Booster does find him. Here's Surowitz. Thought about the shot. Said plays it out to Young out on the far side, and Young tried to touch that and drag it with his right foot. And he let that one go by him and out for a throw. Missed opportunity there for the right back getting forward as he would have had tons of time, tons of space to whip in across. Nice touch and turn there from Keeling. Poked out. Throw for BW. That'll be with about 20 and a half minutes to go here in the second half and 20 and a half minutes in the game. Here's Surwitz looking for the hat trick. And he gets it. Winning that ball back, Ben McCauley finding Surwitz in the middle. Surwitz continues to add to his lead as the top goal scorer on this Yellow Jackets team. Have yourself a night. Nick Surowitz, 4-0, BW. Wow, Surowitz has just been incredible all day long. He's, he's with three goals. That's a hat trick, of course. And it seems as if Earl and Tyler Smith have no answer for him at all. 
And it looks like the Quakers are going to go with some substitutions out here. On that finish from Surowitz, as soon as that ball was played to him up the middle, he had plenty of time to look up, see where Smith was, look towards that back post, and then just rolled that one home. Going to go and calm there from Surowitz. 50-50 ball up and cleaning that one up. The Yellow Jackets back to Nagy. Haven't called his name here too much. A little pressure on the back of Rodella. He deals with it well, though, and Nagy feeds it forward. Now out on the left wing. Earlham on the attack, looking to get on the scoreboard. Kept in play. Towards the back post. Ham heads that one out. It looks like it's going to get out for an Earlham corner kick. And this is their first corner on the night. Well, I have a feeling that if this game continues to be more one-sided by the L Jackets, we might see more substitutions just like what we did Tuesday night against Hiram. And we're about to see some of those here on the next dead ball. Doesn't clear this one very far. Wanted that half volley. Would have been really hard for Paganelli to wrap his boot around that one. Came off the outside and had, so, had a weird spin on it. Now the Yellow Jackets out in transition. Overlapping run from Tusik. Playing this one across the six. Hernandez can do nothing. A side play this one out for a corner as he was facing his own goal. And now we're going to get those substitutions five of them to be exact for BW. Well, I guess I was right about there being a lot of substitutions out here. I think Reed Ayers is going to let up on the gas pedal a little bit, but not all the way, of course, because that means you're not even going to bother trying. Of course, anything can happen in 18 minutes and 18 seconds. It wasn't just when the starters were out on the field against Hiram earlier this week that they were scoring goals. They were doing so as well with the guys on the bench. They were coming out firing, and the intensity from everybody had been super impressive. Brief injury timeout here before the taking of this corner. Looks like number 23, Wisdom Biondi, is down right now. Biondi comes from Ghana which is halfway across the world from here. Yeah, and looks he's, like he's pointing at his toe there. He's gonna hobble off and maybe had somebody step on it there. Again, hope he's okay. A little bit ginger right now and we're gonna see a sub come on for him. Also another substitution as Alex Gibson comes in for BW keeling out replacement on that injury number 21 Clay Kruger so clock still stopped waiting the whistle there from the official there we have it and here's the ball from Kieras in and it's dangerous right in the mixer and it was awkward for the defenders there and sneaks into the back post looked like it took a deflection last off of Erlem believe that would have been off of Hernandez there in the middle Yellow Jackets will take it however they can get it 5-0 on the board the floodgates have opened four goals in one half that is pretty unbelievable and you know what also is unbelievable that's the second straight game in which the Yellow Jackets have had four goals in the second half, dating back to high rum. The Yellow Jackets are once again blowing out their opponents. So goals are coming in ways for the Yellow Jackets, looking to continue their goal scoring ways through the rest of the weekend and into next week as well. Mentioned that the 1st of October quickly approaching that's the start of conference play as well. 
That will be against Marietta College. There's also a volleyball game right here at Ersprung against Marietta College as well. So we'll see what happens for both those games. Substitution for the Quakers. Checking in, Oren Gintner. Subbing out is Antonio Paganelli, who's really tried to run the middle of the, the park, but been tough for him. That pressure from BW has been really relentless. Didn't give him much time. This so one taking a big bounce there and shielded out. Will be a throw for Lefkowitz. He's still looking to see who to throw it to. Just goes down the line. Missing that ball and leaks through. Here's the forward. And Kahindi. Down in the corner, still out for an Earlham throw. It appears like Kruger wanted to take a long throw here. Little run up. Going to try to launch this one in the box. Not sure exactly what happened as Reed Watkins, the senior defender out of Munster, Indiana, walking over to the sideline. He had just subbed in. And it looks like he's going to be coming out. So Nick Young, not too much time on the bench. Maybe only a minute or two right back in. Well, one can only hope that Reed's going to be okay. Let's hope it's nothing serious for him. This one out of play will be a goal kick. And Nagy will take it. Just playing it short. Now at left center back, Andrew Chase. Looking to play this one forward. Muhammad keeps this in play, but it's going to be turned back over to Earlham. Chase had some time. Back to the feet of Nagy. He wants to switch the field. He's got a man open. Gorgeous find there. Picks out Kieres. Heavy touch, though, from Kieres, but he does come back. Credit to him winning that one back. Chase can turn and come back to the near side. Skladania, an excellent turn there. Now Gibson can find Young. McCauley, Young. Garamani, out to McCauley. Trying to get around the edge. The effort was shielding off, but it's going to be off of the heel of Ginn. Out for a Yellow Jackets corner. And so that's the, what now? I think the 12th corner kick of the day. For, no, 11th corner kick of the day. No, 12th, I think. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Still too many corner kicks for the Yellow Jackets out here today, and that's definitely shown on the scoreboard because it's 5 nothing BW. On that corner into the box, head away at the near post. Miss on the clearance, still inside the 18. Shot fired low off of the shins of Maroon Jersey. Sits up for Chase, the left center back, and that one popped up and he wanted that. Sliced it wide and now will be a goal kick. Earlham trying to win that 50-50 ball in the middle, but they can't settle that one. Yakim, Skladani. Gibson checks his shoulder. Nearly finds feet there. Looks like McCauley maybe should have been able to get to that one. This 
This one flips up and off the chest and then cleared out will be a throw. I want a few rows up and bounces all the way back down to the track like a pinball machine. 13 minutes left until this contest is over. A little bit of shoulder to shoulder and then arm fighting and a tug there from Kierez. Takes down Ginn. Now will be a free kick for Earlham on the far side. They can send their big center back forward and actually only send one of the two forward. They don't want to risk anything in, transi in transition. Actually kept three defenders back. Initial header won by Earlham as Nagy tried to come out and command his box. And I think he landed a little bit awkwardly. And he goes to ground and he's hobbling. That's not good. And hopefully for the Yellow Jacket's sake, Nagy is okay. Of course, if he isn't, Nolan Kellogg, senior goalkeeper waiting in the wings. Nagy seems to be okay enough here at the moment. A little bit of pushing and shoving there. Official wants to have a chat with the pile of bodies, the runners and the defenders. There as we await this corner. Hand up. Gintner into the middle. And that one was a screamer. It was coming in hard on the line drive. Ham was the closest defender. Just putting off Quentin Berry, who got his head to it, but he had to reach back. Would have been really hard for him to get that on frame. Any danger averted, and the Yellow Jacket still pitching a shutout. And now there are 11 minutes and 18 seconds left to hold on to this lead, which should be easy. I think it's going to be harder to keep the shutout going. Garamani looking towards the back post. Kiera is making that run. It's cleared out only to the near side where Garamani can try to put this into the box again. It's going to be a deflection and result in a corner for BW. Now looking around the OAC, there's a lot of men's soccer action happening today. Heidelberg fell 7-0 to Hope. Mount Union made the trip out to West Virginia to play against Bethany. Won that one 3-0. Capital tied with Hanover 2-2. Muskingum fell 3-2 to Transylvania. We'll talk a little bit more about the OAC with those updates here after this. And that shot going to be wide there for McCauley. Will be a goal kick. Ohio Northern, a 2-0 victory over Rose Holman. And Marietta, a very close battle with Penn State Barron. Falling 2-1. Now there were some other games happening at this time right now. Also going on. With this one at the moment, Otterbein facing Adrian. Looks like Dennison up to one on Wilmington. John Carroll also facing off with Calvin here this evening. So really the whole conference in action as the OAC right around the corner. This ball played to the back post in the box. Played across the six, a kick save there. From Smith, still inside the 18. This is going to leak all the way to the back post and should be an opportunity to get this one away. Pressure being applied by Muhammad. Tries to take that off of the foot of Kruger, but instead it's going to be a throw. And Lefkowitz will put this one back into play. Looking at the schedule here for BW. Next game is actually tomorrow at the Sears Complex against Bluffton. So this is not the last OAC or non-OAC game. And so I apologize for saying that earlier today it is rather tomorrow. Yep, this weekend, the conclusion of non-conference play this season. Nice little two-day back-to-back matches. But going to have the week just to prep for conference play. And, you know, the biggest thing is you hope you don't lose your rhythm during that time. But at the same time, hope that that can get the, fre the legs fresh. If there's any knocks, any injuries, maybe get some guys back this week. Prior to this corner kick, substitution is McCauley will go to the bench. 
El Hodge ball back in. Skladani giving support. Giving that short option, and he's waved off. Driven ball with the laces, and a free header there in the middle. And that one should have been buried by C.J. Kessler. Nobody was on him from the six. Just need to put that one anywhere on frame, and that should have been a goal. And he'll want this one back. Well, I guess it's going to make a difference out here because it's 5 nothing BW. No, but when you're a defender and you get forward and you don't score too many goals, <laughs> you'll take any opportunity you can get. And be unhappy when you don't get it. Here's Garamani. A little nutmeg there. With pace. Looking for his teammate. Opportunity to shoot. And this one high and up over the bar. Yakim. A little bit awkward for him. He wasn't able to really strike through that ball like he would have wanted. 7-10 left in the ball game. And by now, if you're Earl, um, I have a feeling that you play for breaking up the shutout now rather than play for the win because the win is basically almost impossible to get by now. Clever turn there from Ball. Yakim outside the boot. Finds the feet of Garamani, fighting with Barry there in the 18, and Barry trying to make a run, a courageous run. And fouls the right back from behind. That was Nordine Ali. Trying to shield that off, wins the free kick right in front of his bench. Six seventeen left. Ali didn't get much on that one. Didn't even make it into the box. Headed away. Tug on the jersey from behind. And Kahindi wins the free kick for his team. So what do you think were the keys for that victory for BW today. Yeah, and still still time left again with five minutes, but it would hard to be hard to believe that Rowan would be able to score a goal each minute in the rest of this one. So this one is really all but over and will result in a Yellow Jackets win. The main thing for them is they know how they play. They have an identity and they follow it. They played that ball around well, controlled possession. They really are not afraid to attack with speed. Kellogg takes a touch, he clears this one out. But the last two matches, they put a lot of goals in the back of the net because they continue to relentlessly press. And even after they have a win at half, they don't switch off. They come back out with intensity and almost ramp it up, even more ramp it and pressing even harder at the start of the second half. And that is a huge difference maker for them, and that is why they've had huge second halves the last two matches at home. Yeah, very thorough and convincing ones. And if you were to have told me that the Old Jackets would have poured it on and just go crazy in the second half, I don't know if I would have believed you because of how slow-paced that first half was. They were still getting after it, getting their opportunities but they really capitalized here and maybe an opportunity for another one. Left-footed shot from Yakum deflected. Chase turns that one over, but he's able to get back to it and play Kessler. Out to Ali. All the way back to the senior goalkeeper in Kellogg. Plays this to the near side and out. Could have easily played Chase, but he wanted the left center back Chase to come back a little bit closer, open it up, make himself a better option. And a substitution for Earlham as the left back, Kevin Ginn, checks out. Into the match number 25, Brian Ginn. Three 
minutes and 13 seconds left till this game is over. And it looks like BW trying to push it as six nothing. Tug on the back there. Muhammad takes a little shove as well. Official was initially thinking about playing advantage. And then determined that advantage was no longer there for BW. So now a free kick right on the edge of the 18. So Alex Gibson, actually, excuse me, it looks like that's going to be Matt Skladani coming over. And if he wants this one, again, he could put this one right at the near post. See if he catches the goalkeeper and Smith cheating. Again, with the right boot, could really swing this one in. Instead, crosses it towards that back post. Here comes Erlum. And well done by the center defensive mid and Gibson winning that. Chase to Skladani. Finds Kessler. Chase looking long. The run of Yakim, just a couple yards ahead of him. And makes its way inside the 18, and Tyler Smith comes to that ball and gets it. You know, for the barrage of attacks we've had, or BW's had today, uh, Tyler Smith hasn't been doing that bad. I mean, yeah, five goals doesn't sound good, but it could quite easily be way more than that. He's made a handful of saves. Coming out and making himself an option as well to play feed and doing what he can to try to command his box against the BW team that's really gotten the better of Earlham tonight. Here's Ali. Wants a shot with the left boot. Got one deflected. Only as far as Skladani. Chase to ball. Pokes this one forward. Closest player there was Garamani. Rome cleared it. Takes a high hop. And Ogundipe wins it back for the Quakers. The clock is dying out here as we approach 30 seconds. BW will go to 8 0 and 1. Having won their last one, two, three, four, five, six games, while Earlham goes to three, four, and one, having dropped their last four games. Here's Garamani. Maybe an opportunity to fire with the left foot. Instead, plays this one through, and it's going to roll out. And with 10 seconds remaining, also a reminder that tonight's Yellow Jacket men's soccer match has been brought to you by Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Bikes. Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Bria, the home of Monday Night Athletics Roadshow, and Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. And that will do it. Clock hits zeros, and the Yellow Jackets win this one 5 0 over Earlham. And they made the visit from Indiana. Now, a, a four game losing streak for Earlham. And after a pretty good start to the season, they're going to try to get back on track. As for the Yellow Jackets, they're back out again tomorrow on the road at Bluffton. Continue their winning streak is what they're going to hope to do and go undefeated in non-conference play as they now move to 8-0-1. I'm Cole McDaniel. Again, thanks everybody for watching and listening. Again, joining me tonight has been Tommy Maroon. Tommy, pleasure to call with you again here. Yes, it has. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Everybody out there, enjoy your night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe. Goodbye.